knew we needed a theme song, and I had some time on my hands, and so I thought, hey, I'll start writing a theme song. I start off with, if you like to talk to tomatoes, if a squash can make you smile. And I got stuck on a rhyme with smile, you know, and, um, you know, eventually came up with produce aisle, which when I came up with it, I was really excited because I was super frustrated. I couldn't find anything that fit <laughs> with smile. And I thought Larry could be playing the tuba along with it because that'd be the easiest instrument for him to play since he didn't have any hands. I actually borrowed a tuba from an old band directing friend of mine. I used to be a band director, so got a tuba from him, played it uh, live. You know, I had it through a couple mistakes in there because we realized Larry's not the best of tuba players, so I could have fixed some of those mistakes, but wanted to keep the realism in there. Now in the theme song, we keep saying that Larry's playing the tuba. That's not really correct because a tuba looks something like this, except much bigger. What Larry's actually playing is a sousaphone. Here's a picture of a sousaphone. See how it wraps around the body? John Philip Sousa actually invented this so that the tuba players in his marching band could march along with his band and carry their instruments with them. Dance of the Cucumber, I actually started to write that uh, in a car. Watch the cucumber. It's while it's oh, moving how and smooth his motion. Like butter and on, on a bald, bald monkey. I was dating my future wife at the time, who is a Colombian and a native Spanish speaker. And she had, um, she had this tape called uh, Los Americanos, and um, it was actually a guy um, singing all in Spanish about the Americans, you know, and it was a, it was a parody song about, you know, just sort of making fun of, of Americans in a, in a, you know, in a nice way. And um, my wife uh, would translate that for me. Look at the tomato. No, Isn't it sad? No pretty, you can't dance. Probably tomate. Poor tomato. I just thought that was a really fun dynamic. Here, here she is. Here's a song being sung in Spanish, um, you know, making fun of Americans, which was me, and she was translating it, you know, to me, you know. So I thought that was just a really great dynamic, and so I wanted to, you know, thought, okay, that'd be a perfect thing for, for Bob and Larry to do. No comprendo. No comprendo, I'll show you no comprendo. I wrote kind of how I wanted to structure the jokes in English and then asked Lisa, okay, can you help me with Spanish words that rhyme? And so she worked with me in, in laying it all out so it actually worked in Spanish and rhymed in Spanish, um, but the concept, you know, remained, uh, you know, what it, what it was from the beginning. So it was a real fun process just to work through that with her. I wanted it to sound authentic, and so I didn't want to sing it with the obvious gringo accent that I had, and so my friend Manuel came in, he sang the whole song through once we had finished writing it. And so I made a tape of that and put it in my car and would just listen to it. I'd listen to it for a couple weeks and would sing along with him to try to get the accent down as best as I could. And so then when I went in to record it, you know, it sounded like, you know, I knew what I was doing. You know that in love we can forgive. It is the only way to live. About this time, people in Chicago started hearing, you know, about, there are these guys up on the north side making videos, you know, and so they started sending us voice tapes. And one of them was a guy named Jeff Morrow, who turns out was the voice of Diggum from the old Sugar Smacks commercials, which is pretty cool, and had done, you know, Folgers in your cup, and just had this huge voice. Like, oh, I love this voice. And so we cast him as Palmy, the palm tree you know, with the little coconuts that sing back up, which are both my wife. My wife is both of the coconuts. And, and Jeff was the palm tree. And it was just so cool, you know, because Mike and I could never ever do a voice that big and rich. And it was our first, you know, one of our first attempts to bring in a real voice person, not just two Bible college dropouts who thought they could do voices. And now it's time for Silly Songs with Laddie, the part of the show where Laddie comes out and sings a silly song. So without further ado, Silly Songs with Laddie. Um, the Water Buffalo song was the very first silly song and the only one that I wrote. And I was walking um, through the plaza of the Dirksen Federal Building in downtown Chicago, and I had a, a handful of tax forms. All of a sudden, into my head, this little song just jumps. And I start singing, everybody's got a water buffalo, yours is fast and mine is slow. And I thought, well, that, where did that come from, first of all? And that's kind of fun. That could be, you know, the first little goofy song that we put in as this break. This is the only silly song I had absolutely nothing to do with. Phil came up with that little ditty, 
He sequenced it at home with his uh, one or two little modules and his little drum machine and brought a friend in, Mike Sage, played the guitar on it, and that was that. When we were working on Water Buffalo, um, uh, just singing through through the first verse of the second verse, everybody got out of Water Buffalo, woo! That was supposed to be, a, originally that was just supposed to be a real short note. But when we were in the, no, when we were in the booth recording it, um, I just thought it'd be fun. I, I think uh, Three Amigos is one of my favorite movies. I just love, it's just a really, you know, goofy movie. Um, and uh, uh, when, they, when the guys sang the Three Amigos theme song, they hold, they hold out that note forever, you know, and I wanted to do something like that similar in the Water Buffalo song, so I just, you know, held that note out all the way to the second verse. And, you know, it took, it took a few, a, a few uh, takes to get it down just because you get so out of breath when you hold it that long, so I had to make sure I had a huge, enormous breath <laughs> right before I started to go all the way through. Everybody's got a water buffalo. Ooh. Um, I start writing the first VeggieTales episode, and I think, okay, I think there should be a song here. Got out my guitar and, and just strummed these, you know, three simple chords and sang, called my wife in, said, come here at least, and she's a music major, so it's a little embarrassing. Said, God is bigger than the boogeyman, he's bigger than Godzilla or the monsters on TV, oh, and just sang that little song for her, and she just stared at me. Said, that, that can't be a song. And we were going to a church where the, a, they had a great music director whose name was Kurt Heineke. And I was watching him one Sunday, you know, up on stage, and he had his uh, synthesizers and sequencers all out and was doing all this great stuff. And I thought, I'm going to go talk to that guy and see if he could make my little song sound like a big song. Uh, and sure enough, he was interested. He wanted to help out. So we started you know, writing these little songs, and then Kurt would try to actually turn them into real songs. If my lips ever left my mouth, packed a bag and headed south, that'd be too bad. I'd be so sad. I Love My Lips I actually wrote uh, the majority of that song on jury duty. It was a song that I actually I came up with the hook of it on a drive from uh, Minneapolis to Chicago. I'd been visiting my brothers in Minneapolis. Um, and uh, you know, started basically singing the the basic um, you know parts of the song. I wanted to actually yodel as Larry, so it started off as "I love my tongue." Um, there was another you know, so where you know now where he scats, he was actually yodeling. Phil had a great concept there, taking all the different elements. The guy singing, "Oh no, what we gonna do?" and have that that drum part in there, kind of like sing, 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 that big band sort of sort of feel. It was fun to work with that. It was a challenge back then, because again, we had, we had no live instruments, we didn't have a budget for that sort of thing, so I had to create everything in my sequences, and my samplers, and my keyboards, and to try to get that live feel. But the song is great. I mean, to take those different lines, uh, uh, of uh, you'd call it counterpoint in music history where you take one line and it comes in and it sings one part now you add another part that sings a completely different part and then a third part but they all blend together miraculously and that's just great writing and, and Phil did all of that. My wife and I had just seen Joseph you know in the Technicolor Dreamcoat by Andrew Lloyd Webber so I thought okay I can do that I'm gonna write a musical based on a Bible story just like Andrew Lloyd Webber i would never done anything even remotely close to that. And uh, I woke up in the middle of the night with this little melody going through my head, you know, bump, 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 oh no, what are we going to do? So I got out my mini cassette recorder and I ran into the bathroom and shut the door. In the middle of the night I woke up because he wasn't there, which does not happen. And I am thinking, where is he? And I look and I see a light coming from under the bathroom door. And I'm thinking, is he sick? What's going on? I better go check. And I went over, and as I got closer, I'm hearing, I see this shadow as if he's sitting next to the door, which made me worried. Perhaps he was ill. And then I hear this song. I hear, I hear him going, I am King Darius. I've had a dream. I was actually in the shower one day, and uh, I shave, usually shave in the shower, and um, the razor that I used wasn't there, you know, and so I was looking around for it, you know, and I just started singing, oh, where is my razor? Oh, where is my razor? Oh, where, 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 where is my razor? And, um, and I 
it just sort of clicked. It's like, oh, well, that, that, that's kind of fun. And so then I developed that into this whole little, you know, mini opera about looking for, you know, my razor. You know, why do you need a razor? You don't have any hair. And, you know, I, I don't have a whole lot of facial hair, you know, so that's, that, that's where that sprang from. And so, so I just sort of built this whole song about, you know, Larry looking for his razor so he can shave. And then went to Phil and said, hey, here it is. And I said, uh, problem. I have a problem with that as a mother. <laughs> and he said, I, oh, yeah, I guess I didn't think about it. He was in the shower that morning. And he's, oh, and it came to him. He couldn't find his razor. He's going to shave. He shaves in the shower. What's that all about? But he, he's, oh, where is my razor? It's, and he said, oh, yeah, that's not going to work. It's really bad. I said, Mike, we just cannot be sending children all over this country looking for their parents' razors. So he said, hairbrush. Oh, where's my hairbrush? We said, great, go run with it, write the song. And he did. And I can't remember when we came back in to record it. And we had all seen the words and thought this was going to be just hilarious. We loved it. And we all came in. I think I was the first one to come in and record. And Junior has the line, you know, why do you need a hairbrush? You don't have any hair. And Bob has those lines of, that hairbrush of yours. You know? And, and we're in, I'm in the booth recording it spoken because that's how Mike had envisioned it. He was envisioned the only sung part of this whole thing to be aware, 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 aware. And then it would just be all spoken. <clears throat> and the funny thing was is that Kurt had already laid down the piano track, that fun piano, almost kind of lady on the railroad kind of sound. And he had laid it down, and so we had to fit our lines in between whatever space he had given us in terms of that arrangement. And so I went in there to record my line, why do you need a hair, but you don't have any hair. And I'm hearing this and this music, and I'm in the music, and I just sang it. I said, why do you need a hair, but you don't have any hair? And they like were laughing and crying, and I said, I'm sorry, I know I was supposed to. And they said, no, that's great. Maybe we should sing all these lines. The bunny, the bunny, whoa, I ain't the bunny. The great thing about the bunny song is it's a really catchy song. Um, the bad thing about it was it's probably the catchiest song in the whole video, and it was the song that you weren't supposed to sing. And so, um, you know, parents, we, we got some letters from parents afterwards saying, um, you know, love the video, but you know, my my child is you know singing the bunny song. I won't go to church and I won't go to school. <laughs> you know, I don't want my child singing that. And so when we did the uh, uh, when we made the uh, the the video, the the, the sing along video, and in subsequent records, we actually um, you know changed it to the new and improved bunny song, which is uh, you know using the same catchy tune with words that you would like your children to be singing. We are the pirates, so don't do anything. We just stay at home and lie around. I toured with the Continental Singers um, after my first year in college. At the end of the summer, in the fall, we were going to be in Boston, you know, in the Boston area. And, you know, and I just started singing a song about never being to Boston in the fall and how, you know, I've never done this and I've never done that and I've never been to Boston in the fall. And actually a few of us in the, in the group actually, you know, started to sing about this. And it was just fun, but it was a melody that had stuck in my mind, um, you know, over the years, because this was, you know, a number of years previous to this, probably 10 years before the, the point where I actually wrote, wrote the pirate song. We don't do anything. 